Okay, so sanded down some of that like uh, flashing area that needed to be sanded down, smoothed out some in the front. And then I also, you can see uh, I sanded maybe three inches to each side of this insert. And that's because uh, we wanna give a bonding surface for the second half of the tunnel. So a little bit of sanding uh, helps with that. Okay, so you can see I got a little bit more putty in around all the edges and a lot up front. And I'm just going to start by brushing on a piece of glass like this. And again, this is all in a whole bunch of other videos. I'm just gonna film it because why not? And so once we get this first piece uh, fully soaked out, you can kind of move the, move the putty around underneath it to get a nice shape. And then we're gonna add on the rest of the laminates. It's mostly just other pieces of glass and I actually am gonna put some carbon on the top of it. It's definitely not necessary, but I think just because the rest of the wing is, I might as well. So you can see I'm able to like use my fingers to get the, the sides of the tunnel nice and smooth. And so now I'm just focusing on this front portion, squeezing out all the air that I can and making that nice and round or as round as I can. And so yeah, after that first piece goes down, like these are some smaller strips just to help bulk up the side of the tunnel. Okay, so here we go. We have it all laid up. It's not the prettiest thing, but this is generally how this top section of the tunnel goes uh, and again once we pull the fuselage out of here we're gonna sand this all smooth and then we're gonna hit the top you know the top surface of the wing with a uh, just a plain coat of epoxy same with the bottom and then we'll be able to sand and fare this all out nice and smooth and it'll look great and so I'm painting this wing uh, if I wasn't painting it and I wanted to leave the carbon look I would have done a entire piece of carbon over the top and that would just make it look nice as far as carbon fiber goes but i knew from the beginning of this build that i was going to be painting so you know the the looks of the carbon i i wasn't worrying about and what you can't see but you can probably hear is i have a fan blowing uh nice air going across the top of this and that's going to help take away heat so we have less heat build up it's really just this front area where that epoxy is relatively thick um, but with the air blowing across there it'll it'll keep it keep it from getting too hot and we'll be able to get a clean release once this cures all right so it's fully cured and now uh, now we got to pop the fuselage out of our tunnel and so this first part Popping it out of the tunnel is a bit more difficult just because there's more, uh, it's more of like a break to get it to get it free. Really to get it fully popped off, secure the fuselage somehow. I'm using a vise. Um, and then we, we're just going to use a block just to soften things up along that trailing edge because obviously if you hit it with a hammer, uh, it's gonna damage your trailing edge. And so normally, just a couple hard hits will get it to get it to release and come off. Okay, well that piece of wood ended up splitting, so I'm going with this piece of PVC. Hopefully it doesn't fall apart as much. And sometimes just like that, it comes flying right out. And other times, you know, you have to hit on it a whole bunch in order to get it out. But as soon as I switched the PVC there, you see it came right off. So yeah, that's the basics of how um, you make the tunnel. Obviously you can see that the top part is a bit, a little bit more involved and definitely takes more to get it out of the tunnel. But uh, once, it, once it pops free, it, it's like a perfectly tight, fitting 
tunnel uh, and you have to you know take the fuselage really jam it down there uh, it fits nice and snug nice and tight and then your bolts go in and then i mean there's zero play involved in this joint which is pretty important important okay so now it's time for the clear coat and very important that you cover the holes that lead down into the tunnel because if you have epoxy that seeps down there the fuselage will not fit in and that's going to be hard to get at to uh, i guess chip out of there because i don't you can't really reach into the tunnel um so those are taped i also taped complete other side of this wing just to catch drips you know it's pretty much all you got to do and so really at this point it's just uh, to fill in the weave and fill in any slight imperfections uh, you could leave this as a gloss coat but as uh, we've already talked about I planned on painting this from the beginning okay so that should lay down nice and flat in a few more minutes and then hopefully cure up that way and I also did the stabilizer here so just getting the uh, the finished processes done now okay so flipped it over just glossed to the top uh, you can see it it looks really nice because I was painting it I knew I wasn't going to be worrying about the looks of the carbon so around the tunnel you can clearly see where that carbon was added <laughs> So putting the whole foil together now, so you can see I, I gave it a coat of white paint and then I went over with some pretty fine uh, grit paper and sanded it smooth. And it's just a look that I've noticed has become popular and I can kind of understand why. It's because it, you know, A, if there's any defects in the paint job, which there always is, you sand those out. And so you end up with a really nice smooth finish and then it also hides scratches dents that are going to occur in the future and i guess it just kind of looks good i don't know i've noticed it's, it's become a bit of a popular trend so i went along with it and I, I really think the reason why it's a popular trend is the manufacturers it's just easy on them uh, you don't have to really be all stressed out over a perfect finish or a per perfect paint job so it looks good it's functional it does the job of paint, so um, I guess that's why they do it, and so I'm going to do it too. Okay, so now that's the fully rigged foil. Uh, looks pretty good, and again, we're just going off of looks here, but I believe that front wing should be designed really well. The stabilizer are a little bit less important, but uh, that's new as well. Thinner profile. So hopefully the combination works out. And, and the other thing too, so if we can imagine the uh, center lift kind of being where this foam is, I have the wing blocked up on this foam. Uh, this wing is, is nice and stiff. So it came out pretty stiff. We use that carbon layup. I definitely think because the wing is wood core, there's no way this would be possible with foam. Or it would be possible, but it's just not worth it. But because we're going with that wood core, definitely with glass, a reasonable stiffness could be achieved. It would just be a little bit more uh, layers and, and you'd have to, the layup would be a little bit more um, intensive. So that's what I'll definitely do at one point is just build a glass up a wing with glass and then compare the stiffness and just find out how much glass it takes to achieve similar stiffness to this carbon wing but I was kind of concerned I didn't know I just kind of went with a gut feeling for the carbon layup here but uh, it seems seems I I took a good guess because it's it's kind of perfectly stiff and the last bit of info here would be the weight so we have the uh, lamination scale out here balance this thing on there so 
So that looks like 3.6 kilograms. So the 3.6 kilograms comes out to like 7.9 pounds. So eight pounds feels like a decent weight. I mean, it doesn't feel heavy at all. I was never really, I'm not a huge weight type of person. I'd rather something be built extra strong and way more than be light and uh, potentially fragile. So uh, yeah, kind of came out at a good weight. I'm sure a glass version would weigh, I don't know, a half pound more. I'm not entirely sure. I'm sure I'll find out at some point, but yeah, overall it came out really good and, and now it's just time to time to test it out.